Hey folks, good morning, uh, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you're watching this. My name's John Roberts, I'm the vicar of the church just behind you there, St Stephen's, in a community called South Mead in the city of Bristol. Today is Mother's Day, and it's a bit of a weird one because it's the first Sunday when we're not meeting for prayer and worship and time together in church because of coronavirus, as we all know. Today is Sunday, the 22nd of March in the year 2020, and it's probably one of the first Sundays in years, decades, that there's not been worship in that building. Hopefully most of us were able to watch or listen to the Archbishop of Canterbury's service this morning, both talking about being a people <laughs> on this particular pilgrimage of paused public worship, and also talking about Mother's Day. And I just wanted to offer a little reflection for us all in the community here on this this very interesting day. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, so what I've got here are some peas. Peas that Sam and I sowed probably about two weeks ago now. And uh, I don't know how well you can see this, but they're starting to germinate. A lot of these seeds are pushing themselves up because they've been sending roots down. And then here and here and here and here, you get these little kind of fresh green shoots starting to poke their way up, reaching up for the light. I don't know about you, but this is something that I find incredibly exciting. This is a time of year I find really exciting. The springtime, the days are lengthening, the sunlight is getting warmer, there are primroses and daffodils and celandine all over this garden, and seeds that we are sowing are starting to grow with all that promise of weeks and months of growth and fruit ahead of us. It's a really, really exciting time. They just need a little bit of warmth and a little bit of moisture. Here we've got some, some radishes. Again, Sam and I sowed these a couple of weeks ago and they're starting to poke their little heads up, reaching up for more, more warmth, sending down roots looking for more moisture. Again, really, really basic needs. Nothing complex just really simple things that helps them to grow. At this time, with corona sweeping the globe, not just the country, and many of our friends and families have, begin, have begun to, to isolate themselves. We ourselves had some symptoms in our family, so we've been isolated for nearly a week now. And many people have been panic buying, stocking up for what they think they need, worrying about all these basic services. <coughs> Bless me. And it's a really interesting time to reflect on what it is that we really need. The government posted this list of all their key workers, people in really important jobs. And it really highlighted for me just who are the people who keep this country going? Who are the people that provide us with our most important basic needs as communities, as a country? It's not the people that get paid the most, is it? And particularly for those of us who are locked away in our homes, practicing physically distancing ourselves from one another, people around us, it's a really interesting time to reflect on what we need most of all in order for us to grow, for us to thrive, for us to flourish 
as individuals, as families, as communities. Yeah, we need, we need the NHS. Yeah, we need food. Yeah, we need schools. But we also need that, that social contact. And I, I dislike the term social distancing because actually what we're doing is physical distancing. It's not social distancing. If anything, we're more socially connected now than, than normal. And I think it's a wonderful opportunity for us to reflect on our most basic needs for human contact, for relationships, for community, and for family. Today is obviously Mother's Day when we we talk about flowers, where we share flowers, things that grow, things that bring that sign of new life in spring, a really exciting time of year. And we use that to, to help us to reflect on, on something that we perhaps don't always appreciate, something that we sometimes might take for granted, something which provides us with so much of our basic needs for human contact, for relationships, for family, our mothers, our mums. And we use, we use these signs of new life to say, to say thank you to them. This is one of the bouquets of flowers that some absolutely wonderful people from our church have delivered around to uh, most, if not all, of the women in our congregation this morning and uh, my wife got those as a way of still continuing and sharing this this practice on Mother's Day of, of sharing a, uh, a gift to say thank you to to our mums. I also got a gift for my wife don't worry. Traditionally one of the Bible stories that we share and remember on Mother's Day is the story of Moses, as a little baby, vulnerable, precious, weak, helpless, and his mum was deeply afraid. She was really scared, and so she tried to protect Moses as best she could. She took him as a little baby, placed him in a basket, and placed the basket in amongst the reeds, nestled him in there on the edge of a river, hoping to hide him, hoping to keep him safe from a dangerous situation in her time, in her country. I can't imagine how it must feel to have children who you fear for that much. And many, many parents I know today are going to be scared for their own children, perhaps who are immunocompromised. So little baby Moses finds himself rescued from a really difficult situation by a princess. And the princess takes him on as her own. And very interestingly, she, she asks for a local woman to come and help as a nursemaid for this baby. And as it so happens, the baby's actual mum, Moses' mother, is the one who turns out, is the one who ends up being the nursemaid to her son in the household of the princess. And what we see with this story is that in times of trouble, in times when situations are difficult and people have to make tough decisions, doing the best they can with what they have, we see that God is there looking out for his people. In the time of Moses, we're talking about the Israelites, albeit exiled in the country of Egypt. And as we think about today, we might think of God's people as, as Christians. And as we think of this particular day, we might think of us as Christians exiled from our own places of worship. We too are living in a slightly scary time, whether it is we're worried about corona, whether it is we're worried about food security, whether it is we're worried about staying sane, locked in our homes for 12 weeks. We too are in situations that 
present themselves as difficult, as challenging, where we have to make tough decisions and do the best we can with what we've got. And stories like the little baby Moses being rescued by the princess and the mother, the mother trying to hide her child, losing him and then being reunited in a princess's palace given charge of her own son, safe and well. We see what Christians see throughout human history, throughout the Bible and throughout the broader picture of human history, we see this pattern of God's providence, God looking after his people again and again and again. Those that turn to God in need, those who are heartfelt, turning to God in need, finds that God is there. God is with us in our time of need. As we begin our own little exile, our own little pilgrimage from our normal places of worship, as we start to explore a different kind of church for the next three months or longer, this is something we need to remember, whether it's by sharing signs of beauty and new life, such as this gorgeous bouquet, whether it's looking at our family and friends, whether it's remembering the church that we would like to be gathering in, whether it's by reading scripture, praying, listening to music. We need to remember that God has always and will always provide for those that turn to him. We need to remember that like Moses as a little baby, like his mother, our most important needs are relationships, human companionship, community, family, love. We get this from those around us. We get this from our church. But most of all, we get this from God. I'm going to share a prayer now, which the words should come up on the screen. And I'm going to invite you to say it together. This is a prayer for us as a church in this time. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you taught us to love our neighbour and to care for those in need as if we were caring for you. In this time of anxiety, give us strength to comfort the fearful, to tend the sick, and to assure the isolated of our love and of your love. For your name's sake, Amen. I've got uh, another prayer now, which again, the word should come up on the screen. Again, this is a prayer for us to share, as perhaps more as individuals, perhaps to remember God being there for us as much as us being there for others. Let us pray. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid or in isolation. In their loneliness be their consolation, in their anxiety be their hope, in their darkness be their light. As a mother is tender towards her children, God you are tender towards us. Let us not forget that we are your children through Jesus Christ, your Son, and that you love us dearly. Amen. Thank you all for watching, folks. As always, keep in contact through the Facebook page, the website. Feel free to email or phone me or message me. Let's stay in touch with one another. And above all, let's remember that we are dearly loved by God. Until we meet again, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.